Hi, I'm Peyton Reed, uh, director of Ant-Man and the Wasp, and welcome to Ant-Man and the Wasp Facebook Live. This is a new series that will uh, be appearing daily. Uh, we're going to be coming into your living rooms every single day. That means all of you are going to be involved every single day in these people's lives. Thank you again for joining us. None of what I said is, is true. That's, that's all I said. I'm sorry. Um, uh, we have some questions here, some Ant-Man and the Wasp questions that have been sent in. Uh, I have them written on cards here, uh, and I'm going uh, to say, of course, who uh, sent the question in, and there's some specific questions for our lovely actors here, uh, and uh, let's just go from there. Question from uh, Alessio P., and this is for Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Hi. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, this question is, what is it like to bring a new character into the MCU? It's an honor. It's an absolute honor. Um, the Marvel Universe is huge with incredible characters. Um, so it was daunting. It was daunting at first, but it was so exciting because the family welcomed me with open arms. Um, and yeah, it was an honor and it was a treat. Who here in particular was the most daunting? <laughs> <laughs> if only we had a charismatic director, it'd be so nice. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is a question from Lucas S. Uh, this question is for Lawrence. How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, I have a question. What about this movie made you the most excited to be a part of it? Um, you, working with you, one, because when we met, we got on really, really well and discovered that we both love the Marvel Universe and the characters and that we were kind of geeks at the same time I heard you as were kids. A comic book nerd, which I didn't. I yeah, didn't suspect that. yeah. So that was that was one, and then you know, um, two, everybody here. I mean, to work with Michael, to work with Evangeline, Paul, Hannah. I mean, Michael Pena. We just Michelle Pfeiffer. I mean, when you told me that, you remember that moment, right? Oh yeah. Like I almost yeah, yeah. totally blew it. Like I almost <laughs> it just all over myself. Yeah. But um. Yeah, so we all that yeah, right? Oh, yeah, so yeah. that I mean it was it was everything. It we was all everything. almost we all <laughs> <did that. laughs> All right, next question. This is from uh, Abel Y. It's a question for Paul. Rudd. Uh, yes. How much Aiden. how much action can we expect from the ants? So much action from the ants. Uh, you know, there's, uh, there are more ants doing crazier things, so expect a lot. Wow. Take it, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm just was, was thinking about Larry down there talking about great actors, and he's a wonderful actor. But when you see him fighting off the giant ants, <laughs> <laughs> and I was there in front, and I was watching him, and there was nothing there. Yeah. And it was nothing there. Yeah. And you, those are things you take for granted. And you see it go together, man. You get an Academy Award just for oh, fighting off those ants. Thanks, man. <laughs> <I> said, <clears throat> thanks. It is a and weird that was thing. serious ant that was it serious ant thing. action. Yes, ant action. Yes. It's a weird ant thing action. to sort of witness in real life because you're like, well, this is ridiculous. This is yeah, how's this and then you have to direct someone, okay, to their aunt, and I think I was getting down on the floor and doing well, little yeah. things yeah. and stuff. And, yeah. and Lawrence is like this like that yeah. and I thought. I don't know, Larry. Good luck. <laughs> I see me. And he was absolutely right. And, yeah. and you knew, man. I, I did. I said, that's that cool. Just, so that's just the over taste. Over the top to me, man. <laughs> that's, that's just the little taste of the, uh, the <laughs> ant action, action that you have in yeah, store right. for you. Yeah. Hot uh, ant action. <laughs> uh, question for Evangeline. <laughs> Evangeline, are you ready? I'm uh, never ready. This is a question from Orkin O. Uh, Janet Van Dyne is one of the most iconic Marvel characters and has been around for decades. How does it feel to have Hope Van Dyne handle the mantle of Wasp and honor decades worth of history for Janet? No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Um, it's, it was very uh, daunting and a little bit terrifying to take on the mantle of the Wasp. The first film it felt like, well, I'm just a new character. I'm Hope and that's different. But now to take on my mother's mantle, um, it's exciting because I get to honor the comic books, but also I get to modernize the comic books and bring a new slant to it and, and have her be you know, a modern woman and, and differentiate from the original Wasp, which was a unique challenge and one that we took very seriously together. Um, and I hope when you see the movie, you'll love it. I got a 
throw in one little what? In, 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 what in, the, in, the, in the finale of the first Ant Man, the little bit afterwards. Yes. Hank Pym shows his daughter Hope the suit yes. of Janet. And Hope, played by Evangeline Lilly, looks at that suit and her eyes glisten. And I was looking as the actor at Evangeline, and Evangeline was doing such a great job, and I knew she was thinking, I'm going to be a superhero. <laughs> I'm going to be a superhero. <laughs> and inside, she's going, I can't wait to put that puppy on. Yeah, I remember. All right, next question. This is from Richard A., and this is for Michael. Mm. Oh, boy. Were you able to improvise on the script? If so, <laughs> how much? No. Oh. I'm so glad, Richard, you asked that. Okay. So, uh, somebody's got to carry the plot line, right? <laughs> uh, and I think the only reason that, um, that I was cast in this part is I did graduate in, with a quantum mechanics degree. <laughs> so, I have a deep, deep knowledge of uh, all of the, of, the ap ap of the operations that were going on here. Saying that, if... Our director here, Mr. Reed, thought that I got an if, and, or but wrong. He would be sure to articulate it. Meanwhile, Mr. Rudd down here can improvise his ass off. He can do anything he wants to. He is he's funny. I would uh, admit that. In improv, in improv, I went to improv you. Uh, <laughs> May the truth be told. What? So... Uh, it's, it's, it, that's the way the ball bounces. Some people are funny, some aren't. Uh, I take it for Paul. He added, with the help of Peyton advising him, a great hook on so many of the scenes, but somebody's got to tell some of the facts of what's going on here in the story. I made, Michael, two promises going into this movie. I think, I, uh, hopefully, I, I, I made through another one. I kept. No, the one was uh, that Hank Pym was going to see more action in this movie. I think, uh, yeah. You put a suit on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got a suit on. Uh, and then that, that uh, you'd get some jokes, some more jokes in this movie. You get some jokes in this movie. You get some, you get some laughs in the screening. Yeah, just, yeah, just wait. Okay. Yeah. He hasn't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, let's see. Next question. Oh, this is for all. This is a question for, from Maria R. If you could be any other insect or bug other than the ones in this movie, what would you be? Uh, Mr. Fishburne, let's start with you. Ooh, I'd be a tarantula. Oh, all right. You want to be fuzzy. I like it. Yeah. I like and it. And female. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and inspire female fear. Friend. Hannah. I would be, uh, it's a cross between, I don't know, I can't decide between a butterfly or a worm because, like, I like Earthworm Jim. He's got a really cool suit on. Nice. Um, butterfly. I'll go with butterfly. Nice. Yeah. Paul. Uh, I'd like to be uh, a, a, a brown recluse. Ooh. Oh. Well, that, that's that weird, man. Why? That why? Spider. Really scary. Well, that's that's why. <laughs> no, it's, it's terrifying. Yeah. All right, Evangeline. I would like to be a caterpillar because then, eventually, one day, I could turn into Hannah. Uh. Well, <laughs> um, I would like to be a praying mantis, mm -hmm. and I would also like a couple of hundred thousand more followers on my Facebook page <laughs> while we're... <laughs> Did you while we're out here. Rally around. Yeah. Rally. <laughs> Let's get those numbers up, everybody. <laughs> Log in now. Log in now. Is that what you're praying for? Yeah. Oh, good. Right. Praying mantis. <laughs> um, uh, this is a question from Eric F. It's a question for Hannah. How much did you know about your character before getting the role? I didn't know a lot. I didn't know a lot about the character. I knew that the character was in Thunderbolt and with Iron Man and was a he. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really fun to take him off the page and give her life. Um, that, was, that was a real buzz. Um, and... Because originally in the comics, there wasn't actually a lot to go on. So yes. I had a lot of freedom. I felt like we had a lot of freedom to really kind of create this character and, and see where we go with it. Excellent. Uh, here's a question from Victoria S. This is for Lawrence. What makes your character so unique in the MCU? He's smarter than Hank Pym. <laughs> what is it? What is it? <laughs> yep. Okay. Good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I 
That was one of the big uh, appeals for me. I was a fan in the comics as a kid of Bill Foster, and I liked the idea of creating this dynamic between Pym and Foster. Each guy thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. Two yeah. alpha males, yeah. and, uh, and I love that stuff in the movie. That's yeah. exciting to me. And if you go see Ant-Man and the Wasp in theaters July 6th, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, let's see. Next one, this is for, uh, this is from Saif H. This is for me. Will we see more of the, what? You want to read it to me? Yeah. Oh, let's do this you the right read way. Your own question. Thank you, Evangeline. Will we see more of the quantum realm, Peyton Reed? Well, that's a great question. Thanks, Ryan. Um, we will see more of the quantum realm in Ant-Man and the Wasp than we uh, saw in the first Ant-Man. In the first Ant-Man, we teased the quantum realm, and the important thing to remember is that Scott Lang, played by Paul Rudd, went into the quantum realm and made it out successfully. And what that did was that created the possibility in the minds of these two super scientists that maybe Hank's wife, Hope's mother, might still be alive down there after 30 years. So they start this whole journey to create a quantum tunnel and try and figure out if they might be able to rescue her. Um, they don't necessarily want to work with Scott Lang because they're estranged at the beginning of this movie, but uh, Scott has some information that might be necessary to their mission. So yes, we will see more Quantum Realm in this movie. Wow. Oh, wow. Nice. Thank you. Why didn't you just do the voiceover for the Copyright 2018, Peyton Reed. Um, uh, okay, this is a question from Cat B for Evangeline. What would be your character's favorite song to get them motivated? In other words, if Hope Van Dyne had a favorite song that would motivate her in any aspect of her life, what would that song be? And would you please sing it? In full for us here. No, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go with my uh, favorite go-to karaoke song. Um, oh no! I'll tell you what I want by the Spice Girls. Oh okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna break down the middle because I've got a cold, so I can't really sing. Yeah. So here's the story from A to Z. You wanna get with me? You gotta listen carefully. We got M in the place and likes it on your face. We got G like MC and likes it on the easy beat. Mm -hmm. Doesn't come for free. She's a real lady. But I had to skip the part where they echo each other because yeah, they're yeah, only yeah, one yeah. person. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Did you, wow. Yes. Did you do a Spice Girls thing? Once? I did. What was I did Spice indeed. Girls thing it was did? written. It was written by Jennifer Saunders. It was literally Viva Forever. It was amazing. It was. I met. All, I got to meet the Spice Girls. Wow. I freaked out. I got to meet the Spice Girls. I grew up. I think on we the should Spice all sing which Spice Girl we are. Michael, well, which Spice Girl? Are you? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think uh, I think Facebook people want to know, Michael, which Spice Girl? Yeah, I think they do. Sporty Spice? Isn't it Victoria? Is she the one married? Posh. Mar yeah, posh. Posh. yeah, you're Posh Spice. Oh yeah, no question, you are Posh Spice. <laughs> <laughs> you are Posh Spice. No doubt about it. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, here we go. There's a question from Ben L. This is from Michael. Will Hank Pym ever get to suit up again? God, I hope so. I really hope so. I don't know. You know, I'm just thinking now. But you know, if you can get small, you know, and you can get big, and you can get young. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm for having a, a, a prelude. Sorry, Paul. But I think it's time to go back to uh, Hank Pym. Oh, yeah, you know? an original sure. Hank Pym Ant-Man Adventure. Nothing else, or we have we have a choose-off. You know what I mean? Oh, because you wow. weren't exactly my ideal choice. <laughs> You do remember, I'm, you're not, I'm you're nobody's not. ideal choice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this. Um, I, I know I know Michael Douglas a little bit. If there's one thing he loves, it's putting on a, a suit, a super a superhero suit. I uh, loves it. Boy, loves the feel of it. The, yeah. They're the heroes. I tell you, I love how how you do it. Uh, okay, here we go. This is from Nicholas G. <clears throat> this is a question for Paul. What would you consider to be the most fun to film? Scenes where you are small, scenes where you're normal sized, or scenes where you're big? Great question. Uh, probably the ones where I'm really, really small because I could, uh, I don't have to be there. <laughs> so I don't have to be there, but I'm still in the scene. It's kind of an actor's dream. Uh huh. Uh, so, so the scenes where you don't actually have to show up to work That's right. are your favorite. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You guys will put me in there, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And oh so 
it was interesting at the beginning of this. You said, <laughs> I, "I want a lot of scenes where I'm small in this one." Yeah, yeah. You wanted I think more it scenes be where you're small. The entire film. Yeah, <laughs> which we couldn't do for obvious <laughs> reasons, but and, uh, no, that makes sense now. It, it you know, it uh, it really depends on the scene. It depends on. I mean, it's it's there's no there's no uh, real answer to that question. All right. Except the first one that I gave. As long as he gets the last <laughs> line. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter. Let's get the punchline. He gets yeah. the punchline. You just get the punchline. Let's get a little Bon Mott to see us out. This is a question from Cat B. Oh, this is a question to me. Michael, would you do the <clears> honors <throat> of reading this? What do you think one of the biggest differences is between the first Ant Man film versus Ant Man and the Wasp? What do you think is one of the biggest differences? Uh, I got nothing. Um, <laughs> biggest difference. Uh, there's a lot of action. There's more action. There's more comedy. There's there's more intimate emotional moments. Um, and of course, there's Wasp. Oh what? Yes. Oh, I We finally the get to see. We finally get to see uh, Evangeline Lilly suit up as Hope Van Dyne and see the Wasp in action. Uh, at the end of the last movie, of course, she saw the suit. Uh, she never got to put the suit on in the first movie, but uh, now she's making up for lost time. So I think that's the number one fundamental difference between Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, <laughs> that seems to be the thing. Uh, okay, we, uh, we have one last question. This is from Jamie W. It's a question for everybody. Uh, will this movie impact the MCU going forward without spoilers, please, and thank you? Without spoilers. Will this movie impact the Marvel Cinematic Universe going forward? Who, who is this? this is for, for everyone. So, so I'm giving you all a chance to screw up and, yeah. and spoil things. I think we should give one word and we all say it on the count of three. Oh, I like that. Yeah. One, two, three. Yes! yes! So there it is. You have it. There it is. That's uh, will this movie impact the MCU going forward? You have your answer. Uh, thank you all so much for your time. We're out of questions. Unless uh, anyone in the studio audience or up in the the rafters up there has any questions, anybody We're down in the pit down there, you guys, anything? That's you it. Tell them what they've won. Yep. <laughs> all right. You all get uh, a packet of rice aroni, the San Francisco treat. Um, and that's relax. all I got. Thank you very much. She's right there on the cover of Avengers number one. Finally, every single character from that first issue of Avengers is here on the big screen. Hi. We saw the original Wasp, Janet Van Dyne, in a brief flashback in the first movie. Janet, no! And at the end of the movie, we finally saw a new suit and Hank Pym realizing, of course, this suit belongs to his daughter, Hope. It's about damn time. And now in Ant-Man and the Wasp, we see her in all her glory. Watch this. She gets to wear this suit that she's been coveting her whole life. She so desperately wanted to follow in the footsteps of her parents, who had been incredible superheroes in their day. And so she's finally doing that. Hope has this incredible capability and incredible drive as a fighter, as a scientist, to be this hero. She's the toughest one in the movie. She lives to be Wasp. She lives to be the superhero mantle. Follow my lead. This film is primarily a fun, clever, emotional story of family. Because the quantum realm is where Hope's mother, Janet Van Dyne, the original Wasp, had been lost, presumably forever. I was in the quantum realm, and I think I saw Janet. Now the mission becomes, can they go down there and bring back her mom? And I'm not giving up on mom. If this technology gets into the wrong hands, it's just chaos. The stakes are so high. We don't have much time. Ant-Man and Wasp also connects directly to Avengers 4. These characters are going to be very important going forward. Ant-Man and the Wasp teaming up. Rated PG-13.